So in the meanwhile, instead of the Richmond, we won't see the screw channel in the K9. Problematic in the aesthetical part. Hi, and welcome back to Anika Dental Show, where we discuss interesting cases and new procedures in the field of dentistry. Don't forget to follow, like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date with the newest cases. Today with us, as always, is Dr. Vanille. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Amazing, how are you? Great. What did you bring for us today? A case. <laughs> uh, today we brought a case of restoration on implants using multi-units. And in this case, the interesting part is that at first we have the osteointegration integration part. And in the part of the osteointegration, integration, we restore one of the tooth with uh, temporary restoration for the aesthetical part. When we have a full osteointegration, integration, we extract the tooth and then we place another implant. And then on those three implants in, the, in this case, we make the final restoration. So here you can see the temporary restoration. It's a small Richmond bridge with uh, two cantilevers. Mm -hmm. uh, a little problematic for it to be a permanent uh, solution, but as a temporary restoration, we uh, took it out of occlusion and we use this Richmond bridge for the restoration itself. Will it hold? Like, like won't it fall even if it's not in uh, occlusion? Even though it's not an occlusion, it's problematic because when you eat, mm -hmm. uh, the food applying forces on the cantilever area, so the tooth itself can fall, it can break the tooth. It, it's temporary for two to three months, mm -hmm. and that's all. You need to, to hold this time. Without it, it will be or major aesthetical problem, or it's a problem for the implants because the implants are in posterior area. You have only two to three implants. So a lot of forces will be applied on those implants that can interfere with the osteointegration process. Here you can see after the osteointegration, we opened a flap. Mm -hmm. We took impressions on two multi-unit level scan abutments. And the canine that you can see is the tooth that we restored temporarily. That you used as a yeah, base for the bridge. Exactly, that we used as, uh, as a base for the Richmond grounds. Later on, uh, we'll extract the tooth. We'll place another implant because for this long bridge, it will be, I think, three, uh, one, two, three, four, four teeth and two of them are molars. We do want at least three implants. Here you can see the... Healing caps? The healing caps, yeah. yeah you know it even better than me. <laughs> and the interesting part is even with the healing caps, we still mounted the, the old bridge, the old uh, Richmond bridge on the canine. So for these few weeks of healing, she'll have some sort of aesthetical solution. You put uh, back the bridge from an aesthetic point of view, not uh, functional. The point of the bridge is only for, from a statical point of view. Any function on those bridge will interfere with the cementation and it will fall down. So we don't want it uh, in the functional way. We do want it in st from the aesthetical because it's a little bit problematic when you have only the incisors and from the canine and, uh, and backwards you don't have anything. After some of the healing, we took off the uh, so the sutures, we can see here two of the multi-units and we extracted the canine and added another implant. So in the meanwhile, instead of the Richmond, the problematic bridge, we'll have a PMA bridge on both of the implants with multi-units and with a cantilever instead of the, the canine. You can see here how, how it looks like. You have uh, two molars. Uh, two premolars and canine. The canine is a uh, cantilever. And underneath the canine or above the canine, uh, there is an implant that we want to wait for the osteointegration to be completed. When the osteointegration will be completed, we'll take another time impressions uh, for three of the implants. The canine is an occlusion? With yeah, the I, I don't see why not. Uh, it will hold, it's, it's not a problem. If it's going, going to be a zirconia bridge, uh, I will fear that the canine can break. So this is why we're adding an, another implant. A little bit of more support on this canine and 
in this case, I think for 5D3 implants, it's, it's fine. Parallelly, while we're working on the upper jaw, we have another small restoration on the lower jaw where we have three implants. And on those implants, we have multi-units. You can see here that we have uh, three V-type uh, multi-units. We took impression on those multi-units. Uh, this is simple restoration. We don't need to do any complicated things to restore this. You just take impressions. You make at first temp uh, temporary from PMMA uh, crowns to, to see the morphology, to, to see how it fits, to know, to be sure that everything is fine before you making the zirconia bridge. We took off the old PMMA bridge from the upper jaw uh, that you can see here. Uh, what you is the yellow part? Yeah, the yellow part is candies that she, li she likes to eat. This is probably the main reason why she lost her teeth in the first place. You can see the first PMMA bridge is on two implants and the new PMMA bridge is on three implants because we've added an implant on the, in place of the canine and this is the time where we want to uh, mount the implant and have the full bridge on three implants. All the implants are Vita, uh, all the multi units are V-type? Uh, all the multi units that uh, at first we took impression were straight V-type multi units, mm -hmm. but we saw that the screw child is not in the most comfortable way, uh, place, and we do want to shift the screw child a little bit to the palatal. So we changed the multi unit, the V-type multi unit, to angulate multi unit. Uh, the angulate multi unit is a D-type multi unit. Yeah, as you can see here. Uh, so right now we have two V-type multi-units and one angulated one. The angulated multi-unit is to shift the screw channel to the palatal area of the bridge. So we won't see the screw channel in the canine. You can see here, after we moved the screw channel to the palatal area, the screw channel is a little bit below the lowest part of the tooth. So you don't see the screw channel at all. You do see the screw channel of uh, the second implant, the, the middle one, it comes to the buccal part. Mm -hmm. But in this case, when we have a zirconia bridge, we can cover it with a little bit composite and you won't see it at all. It, it won't be uh, such big interference, interference in the aesthetical part. Oh, this is all the steps, I see. Yeah, you can see here all, all of the steps. So at first we had the temporary bridges, you can see that we have a healing cap mm -hmm. on the angled multi-unit and two multi-units. We took the healing cap out, so you can see the cone of the angled multi-unit and two of the straight ones. Then you can see the bridge that covers uh, the, the cones of the angled and the straight multi-units. In this step, we also mounted the three unit bridge on the lower jaw. This is PMMA, it's not Yeah, there. this is right now is PMMA bridges. We want to make sure they're fine in the morphological uh, aspect, in the functional that we, she's comfortable with the bridges. We never make a zirconia bridges from the start. Mm -hmm. You do want to see if the morphology, if the, the shape of the bridge is the right one. You want the patient to go a little bit with the bridge to see if, uh, if it's comfortable for him. I see that the angulated multi-unit is under the gingival line. Is it supposed to be like this? With ang angulated multi-units, we have a problem. We have a buccal bulge and it's problematic in the aesthetical part because in the buccal bulge part of the crown, you have the highest part of the multi-unit because almost always you, you want to shift the screw channel to the palatal area. So when you're choosing an angulate multi-unit, you take multi-unit that in the buccal part of the multi-unit, it will be in the line, in the height of the gingiva. When you take a multi-unit that in the buccal part will be in height of the gingiva, the palatal part of the multi-unit will be a little bit of under. So in this case, you can see that the buccal part of the multi-unit is in the same height of the gingiva, but the palatal part of the multi-unit is a little bit under the gingiva. 
And here I see you use plastic pins to close all the screw channels. Yeah, we, we close the screw channels temporarily. Later on, we'll take them out. This is a temporary solution. We, we want to take it out. Then we'll change it to zirconia. This is the zirconia you see. Yeah, this is the zirconia you see that we've added a little bit of pin glaze uh, in the gingival part. Uh, so you won't see it when she smiles because she has a little bit of low uh, smile line. But in the psychological aspect, it's a li little bit more, more, comfortable. more comfortable when the height of the teeth is the same height. She, she won't have a huge canine. In the occlusal part, we want to have it with a little bit of glaze as possible mm -hmm. uh, because the zirconia itself, when it's polished, it, it almost doesn't wear the teeth at all. So we, we're adding glaze in the buccal part and in the palatal part, but the occlusal part is polished and the lower bridge is the same. Uh, in the previous uh, video, you mentioned that if you do, do edit polish to the Reconia, so less plaque also accumulates around the bridge. Yeah, where, when the restoration itself is, itself is polished, you have less plaque accumulation, you have less inflammation, the integrity of the restoration is much better. So this is why even the gingival part of the bridge that we don't see here, mm -hmm. uh, we do want to polish the zirconia. We do want a polished surface for the plaque, for the food uh, residues. Here we see it uh, in the mouth. Yeah, we, we see it in the mouth. You can see that the frontal crowns uh, that are on the teeth, they have a little bit of aesthetical problem. Their time will come. Uh, in the meanwhile, she have a new zirconia bridge uh, on her lower side, upper and uh, right uh, lower. Uh, what is this uh, red? It's inflammation? No, it's just the contrast of the... Ah, contrast, contrast of the yeah. camera. It, you, you don't see any inflammation because the upper part of the gingiva, the attached gingiva, mm -hmm. is, is white, is pink. It's not red and uh, swollen. In the hygienical po point of view, she has not bad hygienical situation. It's even quite good, I'll, I'll say. This is the both bridges. Yeah, this is both of the bridges uh, before we cemented the sleeves, uh, after the glaze. And the polish? Yeah, and the polish. And this is the final uh, picture. You can see that uh, she does have a little bit of chipping in the frontal bridge and probably... Because of the yellow candies. Yeah, maybe because of all the yellow candies. Uh, probably sometime she'll change them. Uh, right now we did the upper uh, left and the lower right. And all in all, you don't see the glaze of the gingiva. Uh, the aesthetical part doesn't see any screw channels. Uh, everything is screw retained, but without the problem of the, of the screw channel restorations. And the color that you chose for the teeth are, is really good. She didn't ask you for Hollywood white? No, <laughs> she didn't have Hollywood white. Uh, the, the color suits her other teeth, so you don't have any big change in the color of the teeth. Thank you very much for being here today. You're welcome. And thank you for being with us. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow to stay tuned up to date. See you next time. Have a great day.